Welcome back. Got a bottle of some mighty fine scotch in my room, Bradshaw. Take down that carrier and it's yours. I'll keep that in mind, Lieutenant. And for the first time in standoff, we're in the crossbow. Lots of guns, including a rear turret, which you can forget about because you can never use it. Strong shield, strong armour, and no afterburners. That means we can't really do much for the first minute or so of this fight. Damn, Captain. Am I glad to see some reinforcements. We've got a shitload of cats here. Well, ain't well made. Now let's try their machines. Breaking the back guys. Because the crossbow isn't fast enough to be able to catch up to the Sarfa and the Thrakri that are the major component of the enemy force. And our guns are short range, they are neutron guns and mass drivers, we don't have any particle cannons. So, there's not a huge amount we can do to affect that dogfight, however, it's important not to go straight in on the cameras, because if we do, we outrun the escort fighters and the Karathi reinforcements launching from their three carriers here will kill us in quite short order. However, we've delayed long enough that there should be enough spare escort fighters to go with us on our first torpedo run, so we're going to take out the Hakaga's tertiary bridge. The Concordia's Morning Stars already having dealt with the first two. Now all we have to do is take out six engines, then we're done. You may have noticed, assuming that you can read, that we are facing Thrakai pilots. In this mission, that is to say, the Imperial Guard. They are flying a mixture of Sartha and Chris. And they are the only pilots in, I think, any Wing Commander game which taunt you in Kilvathic. Now, Kilvathic's not like Klingon in that nobody has fleshed out a fully created Kilrathi language, but the... Ow. More about Kilrathi after I've stopped being hit by dumb fires. That was presumably this Sartha here. So, just for a while, it's time to pay attention to any fighters in this region. See if the escorts are handling them, but they seem to be, so we can get back to the torpedo. Right? As I was saying about Kilrathi, it's not been fleshed out as a, a full language, but there's a few phrases that have been translated in the various games and novels, and that's what's been used for the Kilrathi taunts here. Anyway, this part of the mission is basically hanging around behind the Hakaga so we can get access to its engines. It's sometimes quite hard to get here, but the escorts are doing an excellent job in this particular version of the mission. Minus that escapade with the Sartha Dumbfire earlier. So I've been able to launch now five of my six torpedoes without too much trouble. However, because that wasn't a Hakaga, that was one of the two escorting Snake Ears. 
Enemy cap ship is going down, sir. Which is good because those carriers also launch replacement waves as well as the Hakama. Right now we have a heavy fire to deal with. You can't, because you haven't got an afterburn, you can't really follow them. They can burn out of your range quite easily. So once it decides, as it has there, that it's going to go after a different fighter, there's not much we can do. Of course, there's also no guarantee the baby is will leave us very much. Now, I've only got one torpedo left at this point, so I'm sort of waiting. There's two engines there, and of course, I want to get the killing blowing. So I'm sort of waiting for somebody to torpedo the other engine, as they have just done. So, let's go in. Final torpedo. Enemy capital ship is... Ow. Being followed by a fist, fortunately. That's the stuff. That cat box is really dumb for. Shields held long enough to get the torpedo off. I'll try not to let it hurt too bad. Here, kitty, kitty, kitty. I've never heard cat box for a Kilgathic carrier before. I think I have food, actually. But, um, that was this mission's big heart and mouth moment. Uh, no way I could have avoided that missile, no way I could have survived it. I was just hoping that my guns would recycle fast enough to get a shot off. And now it's just the mopper. There's no carriers left, so they won't launch any more fighters. And there we have it. Mission accomplished with pretty light casualties. At least the crossbows, the vapiers have taken quite a pounding. But we've got all six crossbows back. Captain, what your wing has accomplished is an amazing job. Admiral Talbot himself sends his congratulations. If all our pilots perform this way, the cats will never reach Earth. What's the matter, Furball? Cat got you. And now we have a bunch of taunts because never mind. No one talking to rejoin formation, I think, before I ultraviolated. Try not to let it hurt too bad. And therefore, I can't get a, a clearance to land request out edgeways. Fortunately, I don't apparently need one. Had I uh, actually requested it, Freyers would have noted that he owed me that bottle of scotch. And for some reason, the crossbow lands this way, as opposed to everybody else who's side on. That crap, Captain. Spare parts for these things don't grow on trees. You think she'd be, you know, more willing to let it slide when I torpedoed her cargo, but apparently not. Anyway, no debrief screen again for this mission. Reviewing the film, I think four kills, including the Hakaga, and hard to tell damage, but it would have been at least 50%. Anyway, thanks for watching. I've been Alanin, this has been Standoff, and I'll see you next time when we're back on the defensive.